Well, welcome everyone to the Weekend Extra. I'm Shauna Kim. I'm uh, here with Jeff Boat uh, through this Zoom Weekend Extra. The Weekend Series name is Taking Ground. Yeah. So last week we talked about um, Joseph and um, how God is a sovereign God in all circumstances. And mm -hmm. I think um, it's it's something very easy concept for us to uh, consider or or even put in place in our life or try to put in place in our lives if we are a believer um i think it it becomes very difficult um uh, for someone to walk away from the that sermon and say um okay i trust him when they don't see any light at the end of the tunnel yeah you know constant like um trying to dig themselves out of something or you know just whether it's your family problems whether it's marriage whether it's you know kids that are uh you know into drinking or drugs or substance abuse or um you know verbal abuse emotional abuse things like that that like you know if some people are saying well i do trust him but like what purpose is this serving you know like um how do i ever see that there's something good or that i can you know do something good for god through this um when it just seems like it's they have no you know light at the end of the tunnel basically yeah. Uh, you know, that's great that Joseph was successful, but does that mean that like, you know, if we trust God, then that's going to bring success or prosperity? No, not at all. Well, um, actually, let me back that up in the end. Right. So, so Paul, Paul calls it our light and momentary struggles mm -hmm. that are laying up for us the eternal glory. So uh, for the Christ follower, for sure, like in the end, we are rewarded for that. And there is a eternal glory that cannot be removed. There's treasure in heaven where moth and rust can't destroy and kind of that whole conversation. Um, so for the believer, there is, it, it is a no lose situation always mm -hmm. uh, because of, uh, because of the hope of heaven and because of who, who God is. Now, Joseph's story has a little bit of a happy ending, right? So his brothers come and he forgives them and the family's reunited. And, and that's what I'm saying is like, no, that's not the promise. Sometimes the, sometimes the reality is, is that the marriage ends and the family is broken and the, the kid is in and out of rehab and the economy collapses because of COVID-19. Like, like sometimes those are all the uh, the realities of it, and that's where that that phrase, the greatness of faithfulness, came in, um, because when God would would look and say, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm actually not promising an outcome other than spiritually in heaven. Um, I'm not your lucky rabbit's foot that you you know mm -hmm. you pray to Jesus three times and then you sell five houses kind of thing. Um, it's uh it's it's this idea that when you trust me, even though you can't see me, that is credited unto you as righteousness. And that righteousness is like a spiritual wealth, right? That's, that's part of the idea of the uh, laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And so God, God loves faith. And God honors faith, but it doesn't mean that God bails us out of our earthly circumstances every time that we express faith. That's the, the prosperity gospel thing that I just don't hold on to. Right. So, and and that, that's where Joseph was remarkable. Remember, he, he didn't know the end of his story. Hmm. So he knew he was sold into slavery, but he was faithful. Um, he knew that he was in prison, but he was faithful. Mm -hmm. He knew that he had a false rape charge leveled against him, but he was faithful. Right. And, and he didn't really know the end of the story until the end of the story. He didn't know it was going to work out that way. Yeah. So regardless of, you know, our, our daily circumstances and how long we're basically um, feeling that, you know, stress or negativity or whatever it may be, hard times, right? Um, you know, whether it's COVID or any, anything else, um, what is the, 
easiest, um, or maybe it's not easy, but what's the best way that we can sort of um, show our faithfulness or get through those times and trust that, you know, God's got a plan, he is in control, and it's, it's not our own. Um, but like, what would be, a, you know, good ways that we could go about looking at our circumstances through the way that God would want us to? Yeah, the to see God at work is the best way. So let's just use COVID-19 because it's on everybody's mind, right? So if, if, um, if I said to you, hey, Shauna, um, I have a foolproof way that we could see 68,000 people come to Christ, guaranteed they're going to come to Christ. Mm -hmm but I need you to commit one third of your income to pay for it. Would you do that? Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, not to say that it wouldn't be still hard and you'd question it and you know, like, is this like, will this really happen or am I giving my money away to, you know? Yeah. But it's full, it's foolproof. So over Easter weekend, in a, it's a little bit of a long story, but in a network of churches that know how to measure their internet responses correctly, that Grace is a part of, mm -hmm. in that network of churches, we saw 68,000 people commit to know Christ. Wow. Now, all that needed to happen was we needed the economy to collapse, right? So it, it depends on if I'm seeing things from God's perspective or not. If I'm looking and saying there's a massive financial loss here, mm -hmm. then I'm like, why, God, would you let there be a financial loss, and how could you do that to me? Right. If I, if I put, set my mind on things above, and I say there was a massive spiritual win, a spiritual win that I would pay for a thousand times over, Thank mm -hmm. you, God, for that spiritual win. Yeah. See, it cha it changes everything. It, it, right. it, ch it changes our outlook and all the rest because of it. So it, it's really uh, right. Taking our eyes off of material or comfort or um, I guess, you know, even um, peaceful things here on earth to, you know, what, <laughs> what we have to look forward to, you know, with either with building his kingdom, quite frankly. Yeah. And you said it, you said it earlier, you're like, it would be hard. It would yeah. be scary. I wouldn't know. That would be Joseph's story, right? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, what's going on? But, but he made the decision to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just going to trust you, God. I can't explain you. I have no idea how this plays out. Nobody has ever does. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to trust you in this process God honored that. It, it didn't make it easy. I'm sure that prison was a very uncomfortable place to be. So it, it doesn't make it easy or uh, flippant. Right. But there is eternal reward to it if we can trust it and move down that, that pathway. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the... And what I would say is it lets me rest. You know, when, when I'm second guessing decisions and frustrated by that wish it was this way instead of that way i just i'm just up all night eating roll aids you know it just, <laughs> but if, if i can rest that god's got it and my job mm -hmm. is not to figure it out my job is to follow him and whatever path he's laying out for me it relaxes at least it relaxes me a little bit because mm -hmm. i know i'm out of i know it's out of my control and right. it, it's reassuring to know that it's in his. I think it's um, it's also hard for people who might feel that, you know, nobody understands or nobody gets it, or um, they're sort of all alone in this, and which, like, honestly, a text I sent to you earlier was, you know, hey, I'm all alone out here. <laughs> like, yeah. when you join me on this Zoom meeting, quite frankly, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. Like, you know, like, like God, how can, how can I keep, you know, going in this direction when it's not anything, I can't see anything good out of it. So, and, and you, you know, can feel very alone sometimes when you don't think that anybody understands your circumstances or could possibly, you know, know what you're going through. 
So um, it's, yeah, it's turning to him in those times that are the hardest, you know? So, and I think that's what a lot of us are, are facing um, with, with COVID-19, but then probably also with, you know, family circumstances or any, any other circumstances that have been going on time beforehand, you know, this may, you know, people may look at this and go, COVID-19 is nothing. You don't know what I've been with, you know, going through the past year. So. Yeah. A hundred percent, you know, and, yeah. and this is, I think COVID-19 is just the illustration to the, to the life principle because COVID-19, COVID-19 will go away or be put into some kind of manageable box and it will be the next thing. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the way that the planet works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the, it's the next crisis. And the same thing happens in our lives. You get your finances fixed and a kid's sick and they get better and it's a marriage mm -hmm. and, and it, it's the way that it is. And so looking at all of that, I think our culture would say, think positively, make good directions and you bring uh, good decisions and you bring that under control. Yeah. And I would look and say that I can prove to you 50,000 times before supper that that's not true. It doesn't yeah. work that way. Yeah. So who is in control? Are we, are we a random acts of chance that just live an insignificant life and die and rot and go away? Or is there a loving God that has us being a part of a master plan hmm. and we just don't understand it? Do, does the nail know what the hammer's doing to it or the result of being hammered in? Does it know that it's holding the house up? Of course not. Right. It's a part of something, right? Hmm. And in our culture today, we'd rather be the house than the nail. Yeah. <laughs> But right. in God's plan, we're, we're an instrument that he's using, and it is a critical part uh, mm -hmm. of what he's doing, and there's really no way for us to get around our, our head around it because our whole existence is being a nail. We don't know that we're, it, it's hard for us to think that we're actually part of a house, yeah. let alone a neighborhood, <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? So yeah. this is yeah. where the sovereignty of God allows us to, to rest in those yeah. things. Especially when most of us want to be the hammer, right? And right, <laughs> that would be nice, right? So every day, um, just basically choosing to trust and and yep, literally uh, uh, base it on faith that you know he is in control and he has good intentions for us, um, and whether we see that or not. Um, yeah, he has he has good intentions, and by that, he means eternal. Mm -hmm. And so it's not all things work together for the good of those who love God does not mean you get a new car. Right. It, it means it means that you can't lose spiritually yeah. and that you will have rest and you do have security of heaven and God does not leave you or, or forsake you. And faith, faith is choosing. I'm choosing to trust what I cannot and will never fully understand. Right. And, and faith is the, uh, the essential component mm -hmm. uh, of our salvation and then our, certainly our walk with God. Well, I know you mentioned in the sermon that, you know, he is a sovereign God, which also means that his thinking is completely different than ours. Yeah. Wrapping our head around that, that we will never understand the way he works or, or why he made us so differently <laughs> right? uh, than, than him is, uh, there's so many challenges really for um, so many of us to wrap our, our minds around. So, and, and really, I guess, trusting that we don't need to understand it fully and um, just know that he's in control and uh, rest in that. Yeah. And try to choose to, I like the way you said it, it's we're choosing to do that. We're not naive and we're not weak and we're not passive. Um, I'm, I'm making a decision, you know, the, the, um, uh, we do this when we choose to trust our doctor. We do this when we choose to trust our governor. We cho we do this when we choose to trust a spouse. Uh, you know, it's, we we make these decisions all the time, and um, and somehow we want to make God. We demand that He shows us the end before we start at the beginning, and He's like, it's just not the way this role. You wouldn't get it anyways. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a great example. So where will this lead into for next week um, in your in what you're speaking about and talking about? Mm -hmm. So this this uh, this next conversation is going to be on on integrity. Okay. And uh, so we're talking about, you know, we, we um, uh, integrity is uh, someone who upholds honesty, truth and righteousness and then someone who is uh, complete and undivided is the definition of integrity. And spiritually, what we're saying is this is huge. Uh, in a time in history when we are mostly by ourselves, um, me being the same person publicly as I am privately is probably the essence of integrity. And so it's, we're going to talk about the need for that, but mostly we're going to talk about the opportunity of it, that mm -hmm. there is great influence through integrity and uh, God can can use it in great great ways so we're going to look at Daniel in the scripture and uh, see how he used his integrity and also it should be good yeah all right well we look forward to hearing it um, and tuning in to the weekend services uh, coming up but um, thank you for answering some tough questions or reassuring some thoughts today with weekend extra uh, this is Shauna Kim and Pastor Jeff Bogue and signing off for Weekend Extra. See you next week.